Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put up big news. And today's news isn't big news, it's interstellar news. And here to talk about it is Andrew Davidson, CEO of Royal Helium, trades in Canada, the stock symbol RHC, for a French in the S under RHCCF. Usually when we do these interviews, I go into a bit of a, a decent mouthful size intro to tell you everything you need to know about the company. But today, the headline speaks for itself. And before I say that, back on March 29, 2021, we put out a story with the headline saying, from rockets to MRIs, Royal Helium plans to discover and provide a multi-use gas in short supply. Little did we know we'd be so right within 18 months, because yesterday's headline, Royal Helium signs new supply agreement with major space launch company. Andrew, congratulations. Welcome back, my friend. Thanks. Uh, thanks, George. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the time. Hey, before we get into any details, how big is this uh, agreement for <laughs> the company, its shareholders, and your validation of yeah. your vision five, you know, multiple years ago when people didn't know what you're doing in Helium? Yeah, you know, it, it, tough to, it's tough to overstate how important this one was for us on multiple fronts. One, you know, project validation. Um, yes, the people have looked at it. Yes, they agree that we've got a, a very stable, producible long-term asset. Then just proof of concept, uh, proving to the world that, you know, we've been talking about this for, for a number of years about who uses this gas. And, and there's, you're always met with skepticism. Um, I, think, I think this goes a long way to get rid of that. I mean... Uh, <laughs> I think it goes all the way. Yeah. Not a long <laughs> way. It goes all the way yeah. to get rid of that. It, you know, and then of course, financially, it's a, it's a, just a terrific contract and uh, uh, very, very high value for us. Our shareholders are going to be very pleased. Um, and I'm not going to try and pin you down to numbers, but on that note, you did an interview or at least pipelineonline.ca uh, called you and asked you questions about this. And there's a quote in there that I found interesting. Combined throughput capacity of all your plants will be 20 million cubic feet per day. Yeah. And then it goes on to say this contract will account for 40 to 50 percent of those initial helium production numbers. So is it fair to say that 40, 50 percent of 20 million is eight to 10, eight to 10 million cubic feet of gas, total gas, yeah. not necessarily helium, but total gas. Right. Yeah, that's that's a raw gas number. And that's approximately correct. Again, we're, you know, when dealing with an industry like this, the, the level of confidentiality is extreme. Um, and so we don't we're not. We can't get into talking about the exact size or, or price or even counterparty, but uh, that is approximately correct. It'll be a roughly 40 to 50 percent of our initial uh, plan production rates. But that in the facility size that they talk about in there is correct as well. Uh, two plants producing a total of 20 million cubic feet per day. Did you, you know, six months ago? Well, now that I think about it, you've been probably working on this for months. So maybe yeah. you were thinking about it. But as a shareholder, I don't think any of us ever conceived of a contract this big that would be eight to 10, 40, 50 percent of your production in one contract. Did you, yeah, did, it, you did you think this was possible? You know, it's bigger than uh, it's bigger than we thought. And uh, well, frankly, it uh, you know, it, it doubled in the last couple of days before we actually got it finally signed uh, the size of it. So the, the needs of customers like this are extreme. I mean, the, the amount of helium they need is is uh, is quite amazing. And, uh, even at this level that we're going to be providing them, it's a fraction of what their what their actual needs are. So the uh, the upside on on selling into uh, this industry is it's not limitless, but it's it's pretty close uh, for for a company like ours. Um, so it's higher than we expected. We're quite pleased with it. Now we've got sixty percent of our volumes left to go sell to somebody else. So, so well, let's let's talk about the use. I think everyone at home should understand that too, because it's easy to get and natural to get really excited about the headline, the size of this, it sounds like people at home are gonna be doing back of the napkin math. We'll let them do their math because you're clearly not going to, you know, <laughs> you're obligated under the agreement not to talk about that, yep. which is which is fair game. But let's talk about the actual use. Why did they choose Royal Helium? And how exactly are they gonna use your helium yep. in, in their space launches for their rockets? Yeah, well, the company came to us, they approached us, so over six months ago, and we started discussions then. And 
they they use it principally in the launch function. They also use it a lot for you know the research and development side, but uh, uses a, a counterbalance and purge gas to the fuel system um, of all these rockets. So as fuel, rocket fuel is expended, helium is injected to counterbalance the tanks because there is no risk of explosion or, or fire when using helium. So it's it's an inert, perfect gas to be involved in the launch process. Um, that, that's what they use it for. Um, how they chose Royal, I think, was just uh, a simple matter of of reaching out to a number of companies like ours. I'm quite sure others were contacted as well. And we just went down the road and, and sort of proved them what our development path was. Uh, they feel good about our assets and they feel good about our team that's bringing them online. I think, I think it was just a, a nice marriage that way where, you know, asset meets need at the right time. And, and here we are. Yeah, it says something. And it, again, going back to the pipeline uh, online.ca article, they narrowed it down to uh, either Bezos's Blue Origin, uh, Musk's uh, SpaceX, or, or straight up NASA. But either way, all three of those entities are slated for hundreds of launches. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it's, is it fair to say that this, in, whichever whichever client it is, the space launch industry is probably growing? So yeah. we should be more, this is a multi-year agreement, right? So we should yeah. see more and more, potentially more and more volume done as time goes on. Yeah, you know, talking with with uh, with virtually all the companies in the space, uh, there's really there's really no upper limit uh, for, for us on, on how much of our production could go into this industry. Um, on, on this specific contract, there, there's also no upper limit. So there's a minimum that we have to provide, not a maximum. So the, the need is extreme. And if we can fill more, they will, they will take more. And might it be fair to say that this is already pretty sizable, mm -hmm. but they, I mean, I've done this before with suppliers. You want to make sure that they live up to your expectations. And when they do and they get comfortable with you, yeah. that's when volumes can actually go higher. So let's yeah. talk about that side, sure. Andrew, logistically, you know, uh, and careful not to mention locations because I don't want to do that, but logistically, how are you going to get, how's the helium get out of the ground, the gas and the helium get out of the ground and to sure. the, the customer and, and how difficult of a process is it or is it, or is it straightforward? Well, it, it's it's straightforward, but it's uh, not necessarily easy. I mean, the process is well-defined. We'll, we'll run gas from our wells through all the facilities that we're getting uh, built now. And from there, it gets loaded onto a truck and it gets driven into the United States where it gets liquefied. Uh, most most clients in this space need uh, liquid helium, mainly to store it. They use it in gaseous form, but they they have to stockpile it and then they they re, they regasify it at site. So for us, it's a matter of getting it from our well site, which is technically really the sales point for us, and then we transport it on their behalf down to a liquefier, and then we liquefy it on their behalf, and all that uh, all the costs associated with that is borne by our customer. It's not borne by us but uh, we arrange the logistics. So getting it down there, there are purpose-built helium canisters that move gaseous helium uh, down roads. It does not move on rail as a gas, does not move in pipeline as a purified gas. So it's purely truck, gets liquefied and then gets stored in what's called liquid isos, helium isos, which is basically compressed canisters of liquid helium. So now devil's advocate, Yep. Uh, is there any, you know, we know there are supply chain issues around the world, not mm -hmm. just in terms of overseas, but even just assets, you know, in North America, getting trains or yeah. transportation trucks. Uh, how do you plan in advance? Because I, I would I would envision this going to be a sizable turn of trucks that are just going to be leaving your facilities, going to where they got to go, coming back, filling up and so yeah. on and so forth. Is that a legit is that? A logistical thing that you have to plan for, or is, or do you think you guys will be able to handle that because Alberta and Saskatchewan are, are maybe really strong because that's that's their strong suit. Well, we we are strong at that, but it's certainly a logistical challenge that we have to work through. I mean, for every shipment that you have, um, you need two trailers. You need one to actually take it away, and you need a second one to plug in because production doesn't stop when you drive away with a trailer; it continues. Right. So, so we'll need at least two compressed trailer units, either purchased or leased. Um, again, that cost will get passed on, but uh, the lead times on some of this stuff can get, a, can get pretty high, but uh, we're not starting from scratch here. We've been, we've been planning for this for the better part of a year. So we, we know where all of this rolling stock is. We know where all the parts are. Um, 
our plants are engineered. They're out for tender on construction right now. We're in the vendor selection phase on who's actually going to put these things together. So we're ahead of the game there. We, we feel confident we'll meet the timelines that we have to. But um, I, I certainly won't tell you that it's um, supply chain risk free. Uh, that's certainly present. But the good thing is you've also got time uh, because got a, time. you've yep. been planning for this for a while because you said discussion started six months ago. So I'm yep. sure they probably addressed that with you already. I know I would have. Uh, but you've got time because these the the trucks don't start rolling until 2023. Yeah. So ballpark, you got a ballpark about when all the, when you know when trucks start rolling and and the, and the register starts ringing in 2023. Ballpark, I'm not going to pin you down. Yeah, no, time. we're 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 sort of targeting March now. Um, we we've sort of pushed it back as it took a little longer to get this contract finalized. We weren't going to pull the trigger on ordering any of these things, uh, like rolling stock, for example, like trucks and trailers until we had this signed. So it took a bit longer than we thought to get to there. So what was sort of January is now March, um, which gives us plenty of time to get to all this stuff yeah. lined up. So. How does this contract change the very nature of Royal Helium itself? Because yeah. on Friday, uh, there's a big part of the world, and I'm assuming especially in this, uh, maybe in the space launch industry that didn't know who Royal Helium was. Yeah. And now I've got to assume everybody in that specific vertical knows who Royal Helium is. So has the phone started ringing from parties that you weren't, you know, or is it too early yet? Cause you just announced it yesterday, but how does it change or how do you expect it to change just the very nature of who Royal Helium is? Oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's only changed in, uh, in, you know, every single way. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's been a nice sort of coming out party for us, which is uh, interesting because we've been around a little while now, but, uh, Again, it's it's the proof of concept that people needed to see. It's like, okay, yes, you found it. You say you found it. Now, can you produce it? Yes, the engineers say you can produce it. Now, can you deliver it? Yes, the customers believe we can deliver it. And then so now we'll we go from theory, which we were, you know, a year, year and a half ago, to okay, we've proven up a resource, and now we've proven we can extract and sell. It's a business now. It's not a it's not a plan. It's a it's a real boy. Dan, I'm assuming that that what this does is it makes the last 50, 60% of your capacity to sell probably a hell of a lot easier now because you have George Calm conglomeracy saying, well, if Royal Helium is good for one of these major space launch companies, they're they're now good enough for me. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So maybe I'll ring their phone as well, it, right? It is amazing how quickly um, yep. we've had interest in the remaining 60%. Since we announced this yesterday, um, you know, even, even so far as the people flying into Saskatoon to meet with us yesterday to say, okay, we see that you're for real. We would like to talk about the remaining production. And, Will you have any capacity left for George Calm conglomerate? I mean, well, I mean, whatever you need, George. I mean, we're here to help you. <laughs> uh, months ago, not too long ago, you guys were in a joint press conference with uh, with the government of Saskatchewan yeah. talking about Saskatchewan's plan to become a major helium player. Uh, around the world by the end of this decade. I've got to imagine you've made Saskatchewan proud and the government, you've made a real, you know, you've made believers out of them. Yeah, we've had some nice communication with them in the last day, uh, for sure. Everyone's pretty excited about it. Um, they're, they've decided to run a sort of a, a promotional campaign around us and what we're doing here, which is which is nice. That's great. Um, the support we get from the province is, is just phenomenal. And uh, and Alberta's the same. I mean, uh, Alberta's been great as well. They're just a, a little bit behind where Saskatchewan's at. And uh, so, it, you know, that, you know, I call, I'll call it a partnership we have with the province. It isn't really, but it sort of is. Um, it, it's just been beneficial in every way. The way they've sort of leaned on folks like us to say, let's drive this. Let's turn this from something small to something big. And, uh, and you know, we're at the leading edge of that and they recognize it. So, um, yeah, hats off, hats off to the government for yeah. for for making that commitment. Not um, always the I, case. Pardon me. It's not always the case. Yeah, no, no, it's never, never the not. case. <laughs> I I presume when that day comes, when the trucks start rolling, the government will be there. A lot of officials will be there. Yeah. Maybe ribbon cutting. I've got to presume something like that. Do we? Do you? Do you think there'll come a day when we actually find out the identity of the customer, or will it be confidential? You know, forever. Well, I think you won't you won't find out from us officially ever, but uh, uh, people are pretty good at digging. So 
And, and again, with, with the three names that we've talked about here, um, whomever you think it is out of that list of three companies, we're just fine being associated with that group. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. And last question, by the way, if you've got one of the three, are you limited to just one? Is this an exclusive or is there nothing that stops company B and C from calling you up and saying, Hey, we just saw you. It, it's gotta be one of the other two. Uh, we're, we're interested as well. So does anything limit you from, from, a, you know, Not signing something else? No, there's, there is no exclusivity involved with this contract. So we, we have the ability to sell to whomever uh, wants to pay us a fair price for our product. Andy, congratulations, man. Uh, anything before, before we go, anything I didn't touch on or any, or that maybe investors should know around this agreement and any last words to your shareholders? Cause there was a time when most people looked at you and said, helium, what are you talking about? And yeah. so you, you, you've got some real loyal people that have got to be really happy today, including, including us. Yeah, no, I, there are. And I should certainly thank our shareholders who, who stuck this out because it, it has taken a bit longer than we thought to get this initial contract announced but uh, i think anyone who's, who's talked with me like like you have or, or anyone else frankly sort of understood our conviction and where we were going and uh, we had no doubt we'd get here we're here now um, and, and i look forward to to making the shift from pure explorer to explorer and producer is while this is a huge contract bear in mind this is production from one or two of our you know dozen plus helium fields so we're just getting started like this is a, this is a great first step, but we're just getting started. Yeah, and I, and I purposely I'll have we'll have that conversation in the next interview. Yeah. I figured this one let's just focus on this major space yeah, launch sure. company, what yeah. it means. But yeah, the 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 growth is you you guys are the biggest holder of of helium lands and projects in in Saskatchewan. So one there's up. a lot more to one go. Up. But yeah. we'll talk about that today. We celebrate the fact that that's right. You and your team have uh, have really made shareholders proud. Saskatchewan proud. And I got to tell you, the entire small cap industry, I think this is just amazing for the entire small cap industry because it proves just how great small cap companies yeah. are. And if you just pay a little bit of attention, the kind of things that they can accomplish. So, well, you know, you know, George, the job of any, any small cap company is just to continually peel off layers of risk, right? That's, that's all we have to keep doing is just taking a risk off the table. And, and we did that in a, in a pretty significant way with this announcement. So, so the market risk over our product is essentially gone. And uh, well, that's nice to say. Well, and, and the smile on your face at the end of that says it all, Andy. So <laughs> congratulations, my friend, and can't wait to have you back uh, to talk about you know what's next in the fall. But for today, you're going to have the, for everybody at home and for you, have an amazing Labor Day, you know, long weekend coming up. And I'm sure you're going to have an extra an extra beer in that Montreal Canadiens chair behind you and, and, and really enjoy this one. No, thanks for the time, George. I appreciate it. To everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcasts on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform to Andrew Davidson, the small cap rocket man. He's the CEO of uh, Royal Helium Trades in Canada, RHC, and for our friends in the US, uh, under RHCCF. For those new to the story, because you saw the headline, you've seen the social media buzz, You've seen the volume and all the things happening and you want to find out, hey, who's Royal Helium? I didn't know about him. Start your due diligence on the company's profile page on Agoracom because we know a lot of you aren't familiar with helium, its uses, what it's all about. So we've got that all neatly laid out for you. And then when you've got that foundational uh, knowledge and information, head right over to the, uh, to the company's website, do your deep dive due diligence. Thanks for joining us. Have an amazing day. Have an amazing long weekend to everybody. See you next time. Hey guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.